So my wife and her friends were hosting an event in this cool building in Austin, Texas at this place called Capital Factory. We found out we could have access to the TVs there, and that's when I thought you totally need a looping animation to go on there. Oh, and special shout out to Squarespace for continuing to sponsor my videos. Check them out, the link in description, more later. The event was called Uncorked Connections, so I thought maybe we could do something cool with corks. I did a wine bottle tutorial in the past and thought, Maybe we could reuse that, but that's too easy, and I thought, let's just stick to corks. I only had about an hour to make the animation, so in my mind, the most efficient thing to do was to model and create textures for a hyper-realistic cork from scratch. So I went digging in my kitchen for some of the corks we've been collecting. Sometimes we write on the corks to remember what we were doing at the time, which is cool, but it means that if I was going to make a texture from the cork, I couldn't use any areas with writing. This one looked pretty good, didn't have too much writing, so I went ahead, took some pictures of it with my phone, and loaded them into Photoshop. Once in Photoshop, just dragged all those images in, and then I used the Select Subject feature to select them and invert the background, delete that. That was a little slow, so I thought I might find a hotkey, and I didn't. So just did it manually, placing all those corks kind of in a line. Um, now the problem here is that the shadows were a little bit noticeable, so I made them more noticeable with some curves, and then I used the dodge and burn tools to just try to balance those colors out a little bit. Export it as a PNG and jump into Blender, where we added our cylinder. Then we, of course, have to check the realistic dimensions of a cork, which I was doing here. Figured that out, got it sized properly in Blender, and then made a duplicate that I didn't end up needing, but smoothed it out with the subdivision surface, a little bit of bevel action and some insetting just to get that shape looking right. And then jumped over into the look dev mode and went ahead and added in that cork texture that we just created. So adding a few seams to get the texture mapped properly to the cork and then just in the UV editor, adjusting those a little bit, moving things into the right place so that it's turned to look a little bit more like a cork. And I would say it is starting to look a little bit more like a cork. At this point, we've digitized the real one. Um, so then just doing a little more work in the regular layout, I was getting my viewport set up so I could render in cycles, get a little bit more of a realistic look at what this cork might look like, adding a ground plane, and then just an area light so that we could start working on that material a little bit more. So in that top view, just opening up a shader editor, adding in some hue saturation value. Thought I could do that to bring the color back, but I really just got rid of too much of it in the editing process. So just added in a color ramp to kind of recreate those colors manually and have a little bit more control over exactly what the colors of the cork would be. So something like that I thought was looking pretty good. Then I used that same texture to control the roughness. I just wanted the pits to be a little bit more rough than the surface of the cork, very small detail, but uh, more importantly was adding in this bump texture. So again, using the same texture, just plugging that into the normal so that we start to get a little bit of a realistic wood grain, cork grain effect on there. Now to do a little bit of rotating of the UVs here to try to make the um, ends line up a little bit more with the texture, but the way I created it didn't really lend itself to making that super accurate. So not really a big deal, but adding in some more geometry here because I knew I was going to use a displace modifier to give this a little bit more realism. Now just needed to load that image in and map it to the UVs and start to work properly. All right, let's hold the pace right there and talk a moment about the sponsor of today's video, Squarespace. Keep talking about Squarespace because people keep sending me to their Instagrams and art stations to see their work. And frankly, that just doesn't fly in a lot of professional settings. I built my first website, the one that kickstarted my freelance career using Squarespace. Best decision I ever made. Maybe all these corks have got you feeling feeling loose, feeling a little fluid. Well, that's great because Squarespace has a new fluid engine, which brings you the type of flexibility you love in something like Blender to a full-fledged website creation tool. Beyond getting that site looking right, you can also create monetized member areas of merch shops and more all on Squarespace. When you're ready to get started, check the link in the description to head over to squarespace.com dirt, which will give you 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. So some small adjustments to the displacement to get that looking right. And I noticed there was a little bit too much spikiness happening on the end of the model. So I thought it might be good to use a vertex group to just kind of control the power of that displacement on the end so that it wasn't getting quite so much down there. And uh, that ended up working pretty well for me. Just flattened it out a little bit on the ends there, but keeping it in the middle of the cork. Doing a little inspection there and we're looking good. 
So back in the shader editor here, I wanted to go ahead and add in the logo. So the way I do that is just use a mix color and then um, between one of them, just drop a hue saturation value, drop the value. That makes it darker. You can check out the nodes there. Um, but added in a second UV map, you can see there in the bottom right, and use that to map the people and culture, the name of the event logo onto the cork, and then just playing with some kind of settings there to make sure it's looking a little bit like it's printed on there with a, with a nice ink, and just positioning it into place in the UV editor. And I think that is starting to look pretty good. So setting up the camera a little bit now, just adding in my classic empty with the camera parented, parented to it so that we can kind of have some control uh, easily over the camera. And then adding in some of those first rotation keyframes. So just on the x-axis over the course of the whole animation, 300 frames, um, made it just do one full rotation. So just 360 degrees around, and that was feeling pretty good. Now I noticed I did have a duplicate people in culture, and I kind of only wanted it in one spot. So edited that in the UV editor, and then here I am just making duplicates. So these are linked duplicates, just kind of moved them to their own collection, and then there I was just checking to make sure they were still linked duplicates. Sometimes I'll do that, just grab a face and pull it out and see if it's working properly. So adjusting my lighting here a little bit, maybe trying to get a little more close to what the final lighting would be, changing the focal length on the camera, and then I did this a couple times, but just selecting individual corks and just kind of adjusting the animation which was not linked so that they were rotating kind of at, at different angles throughout the animation. You can see me doing that there. I also reversed some so some are going the other way. I uh, decided to instead do a Bezier interpolation instead of linear just so I could add in some more keyframes here and just add a very slight little irregularity to each rotation so that they didn't look so consistent. Then I uh, thought it would be fun to use a little depth of field, so added that in there onto that middle cork, and thought it would be cool to make it bounce out a little bit. So just adjusting my curves till I got sort of this bell shape right here. Then thought, you know, since we're going to bounce up, we need something underneath, and loaded in a texture with the People and Culture brand colors uh, that I had used in a previous project. Underneath, just made that an emissive plane, and thought it added a really nice kind of whimsical element to the animation. You've kind of got that glow popping up underneath the one that jumps, but then also it's kind of peering through some of the other gaps. Since I did place those manually, there are some little gaps there. And just adjusting my lighting to get it, again, a little bit more finessed. Notice some corks, or there's some black areas kind of in the background, so adding in a few more corks just to fill that out. And then I thought it'd be fun to just add a very slight bit of animation to the camera too, so that that had a little bit of a wobble to that. So just adding in some Z and Y rotation to get that looking right. Setting my output folder and rendering it. Now this first frame you saw me render there was real time out of a 4090, so rendering pretty quick, but uh, with that, we were off to the races. Babe, how long till the meetup? Less than an hour. <laughs> And with time ticking away, the frames did finish rendering and I hopped into After Effects and just did my very basic adjustments that I could totally do in the Blender Compositor, but I just don't know enough what I'm doing in there. Uh, so just adding in some curves, some vignettes, some glow, watching it play back a few times and uh, it was looking uh, pretty good. So exported it and, you know, just watched it. This is always the most fun part, just letting it play through, watching the work you put into your fine cork animation um, but yeah looking pretty good so we're good this looks so good do you like it love it you like that Ari oh. and yeah that was pretty much it we got it done the whole process uh it was about two hours but that also included like brushing my teeth and getting a shirt on and like combing my hair and stuff. So all in all, really quick project, but projects like this are super fun because yeah, you have a real deadline and it was a little out of line for me to try to create a quirk from scratch, but it was pretty cool. And I think was one of the cooler parts of this project. It's something I haven't done in a while, just kind of recreating a texture from scratch. So hopefully you liked this. The whole file is going to be available on my Patreon. And yeah, this is a type of video I have never really done before. So if you really liked it, let me know. Maybe I can figure out a way to do more videos like this in the future. But anyways, won't keep you too much longer. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Leave comments below. And uh, if you're in Austin, Texas, check out the People and Culture Meetup. Thanks, everyone. Talk to you later.